SpaceX Starlink third generation satellites may be coming sooner than you think. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good, that bergamot, gotta love it, gotta love it. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today's the technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and the Starship, the IFT-3. IFT stands for Integrated Flight Test, just so you know. You hear that a lot, IFT-2, IFT-1, they both blew up. Let's hope IFT-3 doesn't blow up, <laughs> we'll, we'll soon see. Anyways, they put together a dress rehearsal, a wet dress rehearsal um, yesterday. It was pretty nice. I'm gonna maybe play that someplace so you can see it in a little while. Anyways, it was pretty, I would say non-eventful, which is good. There wasn't many problems. So that's what we're looking for. We want the wet dress rehearsal to go over well, and then they just have to now wait for the FAA license. We know that always takes forever, but it shouldn't this time because everything is supposedly on the up and up. Everything is good. They've done their investigations. Everything is copacetic, so to speak. So. I'll get into when I think that this um, IFT-3 or the Starship is going to launch again before the end of this video. I wanna go through some of these things that we found out. So I'll give you, I guess, an update is what this video is gonna be about. Before we get into it, I just wanna say, if you enjoyed the content, even the least, throw it a thumbs up, that'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not, and if you are, thank you so much. Click this little button over here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And a lot of you guys have said that you've been unsubscribed to the channel, and you didn't unsubscribe. YouTube, 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 I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you. Do me a favor, guys. YouTube rep about a year ago told me, listen, have your folks go ahead and unsubscribe and then subscribe again, and then click the all over there, and that should fix the situation. Why you have to do that? Anyways, I digress. If you want to contribute to the channel, help me out a little bit, there's a little button down here, a donation button. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you want more content like this, more Starlink content, I've created about 250 videos just for you on SpaceX Starlink, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind it all. I'll put a little link over here so you can go and check that out after you watch this video. Anyways, like I said, the IFT-3 or Starship wet rehearsal went over yesterday and everything was nominal which is fantastic. On X, SpaceX posted this. Starship completed its rehearsal for launch, loading more than 10 million pounds of propellant on Starship and Super Heavy and taking the flight light -like countdown to T minus 10 seconds. Pretty cool, very, very cool. Can you imagine 10 million pounds? 10 million pounds of propellant loaded in and then siphoned out. <laughs> It's just, it, to me, that like the numbers, it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. So what is the goal here on this test flight? And uh, a lot of people that aren't in the know, they, they really don't know why do they keep on doing this or what is the goal? And that's kind of what I wanna cover today. How is it important to us? People that are either using SpaceX Starlink for their internet service as of today, or they're looking into SpaceX Starlink in the future. Why is the Starship so very important? Anyways, let's get into the goal, and then I'm gonna answer that question for you because it is an important one. So their primary goal is to be able to orbit the planet fully. In other words, get into LEO, into low Earth orbit, and then go all the way around the planet once, all right? That's what their goal is. And the amount of time it would take for them to do that is 90 minutes, which is amazing. That just shows how fast it will be going. So 90 minutes to get around the entire planet. That's the first goal. Then the next thing is booster reusability. Are they gonna be able to take that booster and then land it, let's say back on the launch pad or on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean? And the same thing holds true with the Starship. 
Now, my understanding is, is on this flight, on the IFT-3, they're not going to attempt any of that. They're going to, once again, go around. They're going to orbit the Earth fully, 90 minutes, and then come splashing down in the ocean. That is my understanding. They're not going to try to do any type of landing maneuvers or anything like that. Now, they might. OK, um, I'm not I don't work for them, but my understanding was the last time they spoke about this, they were just going to land in the ocean. And that is it. Now, future missions, they might instead of landing in the ocean, a hard landing would come upright and then slowly land into the ocean, just like if they were going to land on the back of a drone ship or back on the launch pad. So I'm not sure if they're gonna do that this time. I don't think that they will. Now, the other thing that is really important for them is to be able to do some type of propellant transfer. Now, what the hell does that mean? Well, the goal is to be able to transfer propellant from one ship to another ship. Now, why is this very important? The idea eventually is to get a starship, the entire starship, and have one fully loaded with fuel nothing else all right it doesn't have a fairing to put satellites into it or anything else a fully loaded starship and it will act kind of like a hess station right or a mobile or something a gas station in low earth orbit pretty cool right so in future missions a spacecraft can now dock to that gas station in leo refuel detach, and then head to their next destination. That could be Mars. It could be the moon. Who knows? Probably the moon first because we need to create a, well, we're not going to get into all that into this video, but probably the moon first. But in any regard, having a gas station, a fueling site, a location where a spacecraft can pull up to and refuel in low Earth orbit is mission critical going forward because the amount of propellant that is expelled to break our gravity to get away from the planet is a ton. Once you're in LEO, there's next to no gravity, right? Since there's almost no gravity, it takes no propulsion or very little to be able to get to their next destination, Mars, the moon, wherever. So that is a really big goal going forward. Also, they might, now they're not sure as of yet, I don't know, but they might deploy some type of small satellites or something else into low Earth orbit just to see how that is working. That is a possibility. Now, why is this so important? Now, I don't know if you guys have seen a video that came from SpaceX Starlink way back, like I think it was 2022 or something, and they showed the top fairing of the Starship opening up kind of like a Pez dispenser, and then shooting out two satellites at a time, like shooting out candy, satellites. Now, what is so important about this and why this is important to us is because the Falcon 9 rockets can only hold, or the fairing could only hold, 21 satellites. Now they've expanded them to hold, I think, 24. But still, 24 is not a lot because remember, these are version 2 mini satellites. These are the smaller variation of the version 2.0, let's call them maxis, or we can also refer to them as, let's say, version 3s by this point. So this is a big, big deal because this new or the larger fairing that's on this starship will be able to hold or deploy 120 of the maxis. 120 of the next generation satellites. Whereas the fairing in the Falcon 9 could barely hold probably like four of them. Why is that? Well, the version threes, let's call them, or the version two maxis are twice the size. So they have a wingspan, instead of being 30 meters, they have a wingspan of 60 meters. And converting that to feet, is it like 100 feet for the version two minis compared to, let's call it 200 feet for the version threes. All right, so you see they're double the size. The weight is also double. Instead of like 800 kilograms, you're looking at like 1,600, 2,000 kilograms. I mean, massive, uh, over a ton, let's say, for one satellite. So these are big, massive satellites. They also provide 4x the capacity. Now, that's what's very important for us, 4x the capacity. It will be able to provide more speed lower latency, and once again, the capacity is what is so important, meaning that they will be able to service four times the number of customers. 
at the same speed or simply going faster and servicing a few less. But that is huge. So if you're in an area that gets saturated and you're like, you know, my Starlink just goes slower around 6 p.m. because everyone gets home and they're using it, it's like, well, you're not gonna have that problem anymore. It will no longer be the case. Now, remember, I use this analogy in the past, right? And if you've been with me for a while, if you've been on my lives, you've heard me say this. You have a cake. Let's say the cake is the amount of data that SpaceX Starlink has per satellite. You have that cake and that cake needs to be divided. There's eight people that are going to be coming over to your house and they're all going to want a slice of cake. So you're going to divide that cake into eight pieces. Well, what happens when two extra guests, unannounced guests, show up? Now, all of a sudden, we have to divide the cake into 10 pieces. Now, you don't have more cake. You only have one damn cake, right? So what that means is everyone has to have a smaller slice of cake, meaning less data. That's the only way that the amount of data is going to go around. You can't just miraculously just show up with data. You only have a finite amount. You have a finite amount of cake, right? So you won't have to divide it up anymore because when 10 people come, you're okay because that cake will actually be able to hold 4X the old cake. So instead of only being able to give the same size cake to eight people, you'll be able to give 32 people the same amount of cake. You get it? It's a whole hell of a lot of cake. <laughs> Did you get any of that? Or was I just like off? Uh, anyways, ADD, you know, sometimes squirrels. Anyways, so, the bottom line here is more cake, more data, and that is what the version three is going to be able to provide. But they'll also be able to provide lower latency. And this is a really big thing because if you're doing Google meetings or you're doing Zoom conference calls or you're doing like first person shooters or any type of internet connectivity that requires immediate, immediate feedback, all right, you're gonna need the lowest latency as possible. Now with fiber, you're getting latency of about, let's say one, two milliseconds up to about 10, 12 milliseconds. That's your latency. With copper, eh, like cable, you're sitting at right around maybe 10 to 20 milliseconds of latency. Currently with SpaceX, Starlink, we're seeing about 30. Me personally, anywhere from about 28 to about 40 milliseconds of latency. I'm not gonna get into jitter. I did a few videos about jitter, how jitter is very, very important. Also, I'm not gonna get into that, but latency. Having lower latency is very important. So seeing that we're already at 28 to about 40, that's not bad. But what Elon Musk said recently is he wants to see his system be able to provide lower than sub 20 milliseconds latency. That would be amazing because once you start getting into the teens, as far as latency, you're literally as quick as cable. Maybe not as quick as fiber. Then again, some fiber is slow, right? There's there's some pretty trash fiber out there. I don't want to get into that either. But for the most part, you're going to be as fast as using a cable modem, a cable provider, and you're actually getting your service from low Earth orbit at 550 kilometers off Earth, which is just amazing in my personal opinion. So when will this all happen, right? When will this happen? But my understanding is it will take probably about a couple of weeks. So I'm going to guess we're going to see about an, from the 18th of March to about the 22nd, a launch time right around then. Now, of course, we have to make sure that weather is permitting. We have to make sure the FAA provides the launch license and any other unforeseen happening, right, that will delay it. But for the most part, I would have to say most likely the 18th to the 22nd. Now, guys, I was thinking about going live for this like I did with the IFT2. Let me know if you want me to do that. It was fun hanging out with you guys while we watched it take off and do some type of commentary about it and just chill out and hang out. So I thought that that was fun. You let me know if you want me to do that. Also, I want to know from you, do you think that this launch, the IFT3, is going to be successful? Or do you think that it's going to do another RUD or rapid unscheduled disassembly? Boom. <laughs> Which, I mean, either way, it's going to be a, let's say, a fulfilling launch for us to watch. But what do you think? Do you think that they're going to actually make it into low Earth orbit and have the Starship go around the entire planet in those 90 minutes and then come crashing down into the ocean or not? What do you think? 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, on Reddit, on Facebook, wherever you hang out, whatever part of the community you hang out, please share the channel. That'd be very helpful for growing it as fast as possible. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years and check out my merch and my tees and everything else. Pick something up if you so desire. I would appreciate that. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.